Yeah, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this um, NITEP uh, and NITEX uh, mini school for the month of, uh, of May. And uh, this month, we are really very fortunate to have Professor Kancho uh, Rajaratnam uh, with us. And let me introduce him briefly <clears throat> to you. Uh, Professor Rajaratnam is the director, as you see on, on the background of, of his Zoom background, yeah, of the, he's the director of the School for Data Science and Computational Thinking at the Stellenbosch University. So he's probably the, the, the ideal candidate for an introduction to a programming course. <clears throat> yeah. um, Kanchu uh, studied uh, chemical engineering uh, at UKZ10. And then he moved to Singapore, where he did a master's in industrial engineering. <clears throat> and, uh, uh, and, and he completed a PhD in systems in engineering at the University of, the, of Virginia in the, in the US. Yeah? Uh, his mainly uh, focus area is mainly based around uh, uh, operation research and data science in the banking and the, in the finance uh, sector. And in fact, before, um, joining the University of Stellenbosch for, this, uh, car for his current position. Uh, he was in the Department of Finance and Tax at the University of Cape Town uh, for, many, for many years, where he was also uh, at some stage Deputy Dean and Acting Dean in various capacities. Yeah. So Kanchu, thank you so much uh, for being with us this afternoon and the rest of the month. <clears throat> and. Um, and we are really looking forward to, 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 to this introduction to, to Python programming. And so are our attendees. And we just broke the 200 barriers. <laughs> so we have more than, <laughs> than 200 uh, willing learners of Python in the, uh, in the audience that can't wait to, uh, to get going and, and, and listening to you. And just for, for, the, for some of the participants that uh, join us for the first time in these NITEP uh, mini schools, uh, at the top of the Zoom window, you see also Professor Sinaiski. Um, Ilya is based at UKZ10, and he always very kindly acts as co hosts uh, of, uh, of, of these events. And he volunteered, uh, if I can say so, uh, to moderate the QA questions. So if you have questions, please make use of the Q&A facility at the bottom, on the bottom right of your, of, of your Zoom screen. And Ilya will monitor it uh, constantly. And if it is urgent, he will interrupt Kanchu. And, um, and if it's not so urgent, we will ask the question at the end. Yeah. So Kanchu, people are here to listen to you, not to listen to me. <laughs> so you're most than welcome to, uh, to share your screen if you want to. And, uh, and start your, your, your presentation. So thank you very much again, Kanchu, for being with us this morning, this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Francesca, and thank you, Ilya, for, for hosting me here. And thanks for all the participants for, for coming today and share, you know, spending their good part of their afternoon with me. So I want to start by just introducing myself and and, and, and the cool, uh, I think, you know, uh, I think Francesco introduced me already, but I just wanted to give you a little bit more about the school. And before I dive into what I see this course is about, uh, what this mini school is about, and then we'll go right into it, right? So my name is Kanchikan Rajaratnam. I'm at the School for Data Science and Computational Thinking at Stellenbosch University. Um, if you get a chance, check out our university, check out the website of both the university and the school. Um, you know, I can't give you the school's website offhand, but if you search for School for Data Science and Computational Thinking on Google, you know, it would come up. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter, I'm Kanshuk uh, on Twitter, and you can find me on LinkedIn. I usually post some stuff on Twitter and LinkedIn related to data science, related to, you know, studies, etc. Um, I also sometimes I find these free books uh, that are pretty good. I also post that on either LinkedIn or on my Twitter page. Right. Um, so I'm going to just tell you what the course is about. So introduction to Python programming. This is a very basic Python programming course. Uh, we, we are going to start from, from uh, you know, installing Python all the way to some basic coding. And we'll see how far we get in four weeks. There's no set plan in terms of this is where I want to get you. It's more about let's go as far as we can. Um, if if I have it my way, you you know you'd you'd be building uh, some regression and some doing some data science analysis um, 
you, you know, using Python and data that I'll provide you, but I'm not sure we can get to all day in nine hours um, or six hours, uh, but we'll see what we can do. All you need for this is a computer and an internet connection, right? So you need to be able to download some basic stuff. And of course, uh, you need to be able to listen to me uh, talk. Um, and the slides I'm showing you now are hopefully the last set of slides I'm gonna show you. After that, it's all um, practical implementation. Uh, we hopefully, as we talk about Python program, we also introduce data science uh, as we go along. So, you know, I want to use data science as a means to uh, show how to program, right? Uh, the version of Python that we're going to use is 3.9, but I'm sure any other version can be used. I'm not going to install Anaconda as somebody had asked me that earlier in the, in, in the week, I guess, or yesterday or earlier today. Um, uh, uh, the codes can run on something like Jupyter Notebook on Anaconda, uh, but you don't need to install Anaconda. Uh, my students install Anaconda and trying to install Anaconda virtually with a whole lot of people on the other side is quite a nightmare. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to make it easier. The installation that I'm going to do is for a Windows computer because I have Windows. Um, so you might have to figure out what to do on a MacBook or a Chromebook if you have one of the other operating systems. Right? Um, and and I'm also, I also uninstalled my Python on my computer at the moment because I want to install it with you. So for those of you who don't have Python installed, you can see what to do. Um, from the outset, I want to you know, uh, give real big thanks to University of California, Berkeley, uh, Computer Data Science and Society for sharing their resources freely and generous, generously. Um, it's been really great because you know, given such a short time I had to teach the class I'm teaching on campus and to, to, to do this mini school, they were really good in, in not only sharing the resources which they do with everyone, but also meeting me and uh, you know, helping me get set up. So a big uh, gratitude to them. And that's it in terms of slides. So now I'm going to share my screen and, and we'll take it from there. Right. So you should be able to see my screen. Can Ilya or Francesco tell me if you see my whole screen and you see me clicking on the start button? Uh, yes, but we also still see your slides. Can't yeah, show. because my slide is, is also showing on my screen at the moment. Okay, okay, perfect. Then now we can see your Windows uh, start setup. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So first I'm going to start off by installing Python. Hopefully this goes fast enough and that we don't spend a lot of time downloading Python. Um, the way I install Python is you see the right next to start, there's, a, there's a, a box there where I can type in something and I'm going to type in Python, right? Um, and actually my Python is not fully uninstalled. So, um, actually, so let me go, to, I'm not, instead of typing Python, I'm gonna go to cmd.exe. Right, so everybody go into cmd.exe and press enter. Right. And a black screen like this should open. And for those of us who are old enough, we this would remind us of the DOS operating system. Right. Um, I don't know what the D stands for, but I guess the OS stands for operating system. And on here, I'm going to type in Python. And I have another window that opens up. And if you look at my new window, there is an install button on the top right hand corner. So let me just go through that again. Next to the start button, there is a place where you can type for search. I type in cmd.exe there. And a black screen opens. And on the black screen, I type Python and this window opens, right? And I'm going to click on install. And it will take a while to install. Um, it's asking me for uh, login, which I don't need to give in, but I don't know how to switch it off given um, the, the, the Zoom bar is on top. Okay, I can move the Zoom bar, okay. So as you can see, it's installing now. It's starting to download Python and it will install soon enough. In the meantime, um, is anyone having difficulty with this?
You can't hear anything. Can everybody else hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you very clearly. Uh, so Bernard, Mame, you might have to uh, reboot and come back. Yeah, yeah, that usually helps. <laughs> um, anonymous attendee is using Ubuntu. So if anyone is having, uh, uh, if anybody wants to, uh, is using uh, Ubuntu, they can uh, speak to uh, anonymous attendee. Uh, I'm attending, I'm using PyCharm's IDE. I think it should be fine. Mario Caldas, um, um, when you say you're having difficulty, what do you mean? Yes, by by Pello, if you if you want to follow it, you can uh, install it at the same time. Rendani, what I did was I went to start next to start on on my Windows machine is the place where it says type here to search. I typed cmd.exe, and this black screen opened up. Uh, the black screen at the back here, and then I typed in Python. And from there, it, started, it opened up another window where I clicked on install and it, it installed Python. Right. Now it says on my screen, I'm just gonna close a chat window. It says uh, the product is installed. If you look at my uh, window now where my cursor is, it says the product is installed, which means my Python 3.9 is installed. So I'm gonna close that window. And then I'm just going to go back to my black screen, right? Um, I'm just waiting a minute so everybody catches up. Sorry, Kanju, but maybe, you know, everybody who don't want to download the kind of the Python, maybe they can just use the Google call up. I assume that oh, yeah, everyone have a Google. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and it's like, you know, and it works on all platforms, so it's quick and easy. Yeah, so you can also use but Google the, Colab. I've just, I've never really used Google, Google Colab. I presume if I search for Google Colab, uh, it would take me to Google. And does it, uh, is there a certain amount of, ban not bandwidth, amount of uh, calculations that you can do on Google Colab? Are you I, I think it's something like eight or 12 hours limit. I mean, oh, like per okay. one program run, I mean, it's more than enough, you know, so it's like. Okay, okay, yeah, that'll be more than enough. But you can use Google Colab. Uh, I'm going to install Python on my own machine um, mm -hmm. because, oh, I should also tell you, you know, I, I only started learning Python about two weeks ago. So a lot of what I'm going to do now, I'm going to learn it with you. So by seeing me do stuff, I hope that helps you learn as well. Uh, rather than me putting and quantificating to you how to do stuff um, because I don't know uh, Python that well, but I do know how to program, right? Okay, so I've downloaded Python and Python is, uh, okay, I've got Python installed. Now I'm going to go onto my internet for, uh, and I'm gonna search for, um, I'm going to Google and I'm gonna search for a package called PUP. So it's G-E-T, a dash PIP. Let me spell it again is GET dash PIP. And I want to download this package. So uh, my first um, link is installing with getpip.py. And if I come down here, somewhere down here, I will see pup. Um, and there is pup, right? So to secure, to manually uh, uh, download pup, all I do is right click it and save this link somewhere. Uh, I'm saving it onto my downloads folder. So I know where it is installed and, and there it is get, uh, get dash pip dot py and I'm going to save. Since I had it already, it's just getting saved in the same place. Um, okay, so then I'm going to install a uh, pup, right? Um, and so I go back to my, my um, uh, computer here and I find, I go to the folder where I downloaded pup. So you've got to remember where you downloaded pup downloads. And if I say dir get dash pip, um, 
I should maybe I should say pip.py. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not there. And there it is, right? So um, my get pip uh, file is downloaded under my downloads folder. And now all I do is type get uh, pip.py and hopefully it installs something. And when I type in get pip.py, another window opens up and it starts downloading stuff. And it gives me a lot of warning signs. I'm ignoring the warning signs for now because it still seems to work with, 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 uh, despite the warning and it's just going on. I'm, um, I'm going back to the chat room to see if anyone else is doing the similar thing and if they're having difficulties. If I download, or oh, I've missed the question. Yeah, see user level, just go type Python and continue as well. Um, Mohammed Asad Balim, it could possibly slow down because you are using memory space, right? Okay, so you're lost on getting pip. So I'm gonna show you how to get pip. So what I did was, sorry, I've got just too many windows open. Uh, I searched for, on Google, I searched for get-pip, right? And when I search for get-pip, the first uh, link that I get is installing with get-pip.py. Get I go into that folder. Um, and as I come down, it says here to manually install pub securely download get pip.py file. So then I right click on where the link is for get pip.py and I save that link onto my downloads folder or somewhere as long as you know where it is. And then what I did was I, I went to my folder on, on back on the black screen where the command prompt is um where where get p uh, purpose downloaded and i just type get pip.py get dash pip.py right. i'm just going to wait a second uh, while people finish that Is strictly uh, Sean Weinberg. It will strictly Python. I mean, we are going to look at tables and 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 arrays, uh, but I don't think you need to know linear algebra much. Right. Get purpose the same as IDE. I'm not sure, Tabani. I don't. I haven't used um, um, uh, Python on on a. I guess it's a development platform. Ilya, do you know the answer to that? Okay, Ilya is typing. Uh, IDE should, should have built-in PIP uh, possibilities, but you can also use PIP like from the IDE using the exclamation mark. So you can use exclamation PIP, install and package. Okay. So, 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 so then for the next step, you got to listen carefully. So the, the people who are using IDE should have an exclamation mark in front of what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to type pup install data science, right? And the people who are using IDE should have exclamation mark pup install data science. Is that right, Ilya? Right. So I'm going to install yes, yeah, the yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, Thank they you. need to put the exclamation exclamation mark in front because it's a general statement about doing anything from inside of the Python. If you want to run any DOS command from inside of the Python or kind of any command line action from inside of the Python, you need to put like exclamation mark and you you bring your command. So when okay, you so the people who are using ID, students, you're already in Python, so you've got to put the exclamation mark. Yeah, and, and run that code. Yeah. So I'm going to press enter now, and it's going to install data science for me. This could potentially take a little while. 
right? Okay, P PS still yes. Great. Same thing for me. Data science has been installed on, on my laptop. You can use Spider Moya Harbor. Uh, yes, it's this uh, installation in addition to Python. Yes. So, purpose of package that helps you uh, install libraries on Python. Right. And now I'm installing a library called Data Science that was built by Berkeley University to teach um, uh, Python at a very basic level. And from many IDEs, people can type in the console directly. I mean, you don't even need to write where the text of the program is, but in the console and from console, they can install it. Like if they really like exclamation mark, people, people install data science, it will be executed separately. Okay. So there's a console on, on, on the IDE, is it? It should be. I mean, at least in the spider, hundred percent. And I think in the PyCharm, somebody asked about the PyCharm. There is also a, con a console available easily. Okay. If, if people are using Jupyter, they just need to write it directly in the Jupyter notebook and execute yeah. that cell. Yeah. And it will it will install the corresponding package with the. But don't notebook forget the exclamation great, mark. Great... Sorry. So yeah. Sorry, Eli, I was talking about you. Uh, Jupyter Notebook is a great uh, place to also run Python. So my students here use Jupyter Notebook. I just think I thought it'd be difficult to get people who haven't installed it, uh, install, you know, to get them to install. I went to Google and downloaded Python. It's installing. Command Prom is giving headache already, and I'm using it for the first time. Am I the only one new to programming? So by Pello, so this is all about still in, we are installing Python, right? So why is command prompt, what is the command prompt telling you? Is it just going slow? You need to type in, so, so, so to, um, if you're typing it from the command uh, prompt, then uh, you've got to type in the following. Pup data science, pup install data science. In Jupyter Notebook, you could go straight pup uh, install data science if you've already got pup. P.S. Silius, don't worry about the warning. Let the warning all come. Johan Berger, you can just type pup install data science on Jupyter Notebook. Okay, I, I used to do it without the exclamation mark on, on Jupyter Notebook. So I wanted to install this with you for those who haven't in ha you know haven't had installed Python before. So we can go through it together, right? Hopefully it doesn't take too long to installation of PUP. So you've got to go to, uh, you've got to search for the file, uh, Saleh, you've got to search for this following file on Google search. Pierre Silius, your computer is faster than mine. Um, so Saleh, you've got to go to search for getpub.py, uh, go into the first link and download the getpub.py. Uh, cmd.exe. Rama Nkosi, cmd.exe. So I'm gonna show again, oh, I can't, so I can't show the, 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 how do I know if it is successfully installed? I think it just goes back to your directory. Rosa. So Tabelo, to, uh, to, uh, you, you go to, you search for getpub.py on Google, go into the first link and download getpub.py, notice where you downloaded it, and then go into your command prompt and run getpub by just writing get-pub.py.
guys also listen to what Ilya is saying there. If you have difficulty, try using collab.research.google.com. You can also run your, 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 your Python over there. So I'm gonna close my chat window for a moment. So my thing is still running. So while it's running, hopefully it doesn't run for too much longer. So, so Mariam, uh, don't go into Python yet. I didn't go into that. So you got to, Mariam, you got to type exit open bracket close bracket to come out of uh, Python. Ibrahim, I'm writing your solution here. Search for CMD and EXP on the machine. I presume you are on Windows. If you are on. So mine's still downloading. I see it, it had a movement just now. Um, it says unexpected character when getting put on the command prompt. Uh, so Demacazzo, what have you downloaded so far? So yeah, I'm just writing answers to people while I'm waiting for, um, while we wait for mine to load. Uh, Ilya, once we have a notebook in Google Lab, how do we get pup? Do they just type uh, exclamation pup? In, sorry. It, it should it should be installed. I mean, the pip should, oh, it should be, be installed. installed Abigail, in the... then you don't have to worry about pup. Yeah, because the pip should be installed. You might need to install some additional packages, but I think usually in the Google Collab, what you have some basic packages like NumPy, SciPy will be installed and people just need to type exclamation mark pip install data science to get the full set which you advertise. Okay. Um, for Daniel, your, you, if, if you, so when I use Jupyter Notebook, I'd have to install uh, pip. Yeah, so so Demacazzo, if you are in the same wording as you see on my screen, then just wait for it to complete. Unfortunately, it's, it's just taking a little bit of time on my side too, but I see it's still working. Okay, mine finished downloaded. Uh, so for those of you who haven't got to this part, I'm going to go through it again quite quickly, right? So I'm starting from the top. So if you've already done some of these steps, you've got to, um, you've got to what do you call it? Not do them again. Um, is there some way I can write this um, so everybody can see it? Ilya?
you can just write in the chat to everyone. Uh, it's but it looks like I can only see people's questions. Ah. Uh, no, you should be able to see chat as well. Uh, I think when you are in your screen share mode, there should be somewhere in the corner, something like three dots, which you can press and you'll be also able to see the chat. Okay, okay. The code meeting info disable hide. Ooh, I don't see it. Um, I wonder if, so what is this that I've got open? That's Q and A uh, session. Maybe it's under participant, no? Um, oh, there, sorry, yeah, you're right. Okay, I'm gonna write okay, all okay. the, all the stuff here starting now. Can't you, can't you writing here? Okay. I, I went to, uh, I typed in cmd.exe, a black screen opened up. Uh, on there, I typed, on there, I typed Python. Assuming you don't have Python already installed. Uh, right. Can't you? Sorry, uh, you are writing just to the panelist. You need to click on oh. uh, panelist and attendees. Oh, thank you for that. Sorry, I, I just <laughs> noticed it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, 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 I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write it again, right? So, uh, I went to cmd.exe. Uh, black screen opened up since I don't have Python and a new window screen. On the screen, I clicked on install. There you go. You are ready to launch Python from the command from uh, PA, but I'm not launching it yet, right? Um, I can't find my black screen because of the chat. Okay. So, so I typed in all the different uh, steps that I took. Uh, I want to take one last step, right? I want you to go to your internet and search for uh, search for, let's see, on Google data eight, right? Fall 2025. Right. Actually, I'll, 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 I'll give, I'll, I'll copy and paste the link on the chat room window. So I went to this 
link, right? On this link, you will see, you'll see three different folders, et cetera, right? And then I clicked on code and I downloaded the zip file, right? So I downloaded the zip on the link that I just gave you. So go to the link that I just put on the chat room, go to code and download the zip file. So Moya Hub, I'm not sure what your error could be. We could try to solve it at the end. Um, okay, cool. Masihulume, if it's working, it's good. Okay, great, Daniel. So my zip file is still downloading. And the reason why I want to use the zip file is because it's got uh, various uh, data uh, files in it. So mine's still downloading. Has anyone finished downloading the sub file? Oh, what did I just do? So I unzipped the zip file and I and I stored it under a, under um, a folder called NITEP data, right? And then now we can start using Python once you've downloaded that file. So setting up was it's taken us around forty minutes. Uh, that is fine. Abigail Tambiran, save your, unzip the file and save it somewhere. Okay, so I've saved it under uh, NIFEP data, and there it is, right? So you could see it on my left-hand side. And I'm gonna close the chat window. Okay. Okay, now we can start, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, playing with Python. So I'm just going to go into that folder where I saved, um, uh, the my unzip file, and I'm going to the folder called LEC, right? So if you look at it, my the last folder I am is on LEC. If I say DIR or directory, you'll see a whole lot of file files in there, right? And a lot of those IP YMB files, you could just use, you know, open it up on Jupyter Notebook and run it there. But uh, I'm going to use um, uh, Python on 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 the black screen or the command prompt, right? So. I'm going to start Python. So I'm now in the folder where the left folder is. And the reason why I want to start there is because all the data files are saved there. And on there, I type Python and I should go into my Python mode, right? There should be three greater than signs on the left-hand side, which indicates I'm on, in Python now. Right. And let's do some simple Python, right? I'm going to type, a single quote, hello, and a single quote. And you'll see it tells me, it repeats itself back to me. So I'm going to say, hello world, right? So whatever I type in a single quote, I can, it'll come back to me. Hello, mini school participant, right? Let's see if I can use double quotes. Double quotes also doesn't matter, right? You just have to be consistent. So you can't say something like, so you, if you want to say, don't uh, do not do something where don't has a, has a apostrophe in it, 
then you want to cover it all by double ports, right? And then it'll give it back to you, uh, back whatever you type. So, you know, in a classical, when you learn programming, the first thing they teach you is for to teach the computer to say something back to you. And this is what you've done now is you've, you've, you've told the computer to say something back to you. In this case, let's say, hello world, right? That's your first program. Uh, I'm just going to check if there's any question to that. How do you spell Cortison? Okay, uh, Vasily, this is what you must do, right? I'm going back to my command prompt. So Vasily, you must look at this carefully. If I write cd dot dot, it takes away, it goes up a folder. And if I say cd lec, then it goes into the lec folder. So you need to do cd dot dot multiple times until you come out of it or cd lec to go into it. That's one way to do it. And that's how I always do it. There are other ways to do it too, right? And then once you're in the folder you want, you just go into Python. And like I did earlier, hello world, right? Now I want to do some, some simple stuff, right? I want to, let's say add numbers. So I could say three plus five. It gives me an answer like eight. What happens if we put spaces in the middle to make it look neater? It looks like you know Python doesn't care about spaces in this instance, right? Um, what about if I want to subtract eight minus five or five minus eight, right? So I can easily add and subtract using uh, Python on the command prompt, right? Um, let's do multiplication, three times five, 15. Right? So this is just like using a calculator, right? I can add, I can subtract, I can multiply. Can somebody tell me what would be the answer to this? Three plus five times nine. Let me check the chat room to see what you guys say. Yes, you can clone the file. 48. Okay, so three times five, uh, three plus five times nine will give me 48, exactly right, right? Because it works out the multiplication first before the addition. If I wanted to add, I will of course have to put that in a, in, in, in a bracket, right? So it'll be three plus five, which is eight, eight times nine is 72, right? So it, it, it calculates the multiplication first, unless I have brackets, then it calculates what's in the bracket. So it's kind of stuff that you would have done in high school mathematics where brackets comes before multiplication, which comes before addition, right? Um, addition comes, of course, if it's in, inside a bracket. As an addition comes first. So this is simple calculation I could do. I want to do one more simple calculation. What if I wanted to raise uh, three to the power of two? The way you raise three to the power of two is by putting in two asterisks, right? Three, three squared will be this. Five to the power of three is 125. And so it's five asterisk, asterisk three. So we can do simple calculations with uh, Python. What if we wanted to uh, uh, create a variable, right? So I want to allocate the number five to a variable A. If I do that, now every time I type A and I press enter, it gives me the answer five, unless I change it. So B equals nine will give me, will, will tell Python that I'm allocating nine and I'm gonna call, sorry, I'm gonna allocate nine to B, right? And so every time I type B and press enter, it will tell me it's equal to nine. And now I can do operations on this A, plus, on this A and B. Because A is equal to five and B is equal to nine, A plus B equals 14, right? I can say A times three, which would be five times three is equal to 15. Now I can create more of these variables. I'm gonna say total is equal to A plus B, right? Uh, I said A was equal to five, B is equal to nine. So total must be equal to 14, right? Now, when I write total equals A plus B, it doesn't give me an answer because I'm giving it an instruction. I'm telling it, I'm telling Python that total is equal to something. It's an instruction. But if I write total by itself, now I'm asking Python to tell me what total is equal to. 
and it gives me, it replies back with 14, right? Does everybody get that? Can I have a show of hands on, on the chat or somewhere? Okay, Pierre Celius is getting that and Vasily is getting that, great. So I lost, so by pillow, uh, tell me where you're lost. Are you still installing? Okay, so I'm gonna carry on by I might have to help you later, right? I'll stay uh, back after for a while to help you. Okay, totally. Okay, now what happens if, so I said A is equal to five and B is equal to nine. So total is equal to A plus B, which is equal to 14. What if I say A is equal to 25, right? What is total equal to now? So Sibeliso says it's equal to 34. Rosa C says equal to 14. So the easiest thing to do is for you to go and uh, uh, you know type in total and see what it tells you, right? So I'm gonna type in total and I'll see what, what Python tells me. It tells me it's 14. And the reason why it's 14 is that you gave instructions earlier that total is equal to A, total is equal to A plus B, which is equal to five plus nine. Then you changed A, but then you didn't tell total to be updated, right? Total is still equals to the old A plus B. So total was equal to A five plus nine. Therefore total doesn't change. Even the A has changed, right? Now, if I go back and say total is equal to A plus B, now it will update total with the new value of A and therefore total is equal to 34, right? Um, what if I say total is equal to A plus C? It gives me an error. And the reason why it's giving me an error is because I did not define what C is equal to. I had defined A, which was equal to now 25. I had defined B, which is equal to nine. And I had defined total, which is equal to A plus B. Now I'm defining total is equal to A plus C, but there is no variable called C because I have never defined it. Therefore, it, it gives me an error. And it tells me name error, Name C is not defined. Uh, sorry, Kenju. Can uh, I make a very quick comment? Yeah. Because somebody is asking, please guide on steps in Colab. Okay, so when okay, you sure. enter Colab, you need to, to create a new notebook. After you create a notebook, you get one cell for execution. So in that cell, you can type whatever you need to type, what the Kenju is typing on the screen. But afterwards, you need to, uh, to press on the on the kind of on a circle with a white triangle, it will be running the corresponding cell. If you need to do more, you need to press add code, which is on the top of the of the window, plus code or plus text. Text is just for the comments, plus code will add you another cell, which you can execute in the similar way, write your code and afterwards enter the uh, uh, black circle with a with the white triangle. Okay, that's all, thank you. Cool, thank you. So, so, so Google Colab looks just like Jupyter Notebook, right? Yes, yeah. It's it's based on Jupyter Notebook or inspired oh, by Jupyter Notebook. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, yeah. So let me open my Jupyter Notebook and maybe uh, people will see um, see what what you're talking about. Uh, you can see my screen, right? Uh, yes, yes, we can still see your screen, can't you? Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, I'm just going to open Jupyter Notebook uh, quickly to show what, what Colab kind of looks like. My Anaconda takes a long time to open. Moses, yeah, C is not defined. Um, Velo, you've got to download uh, in that link that I gave you um, earlier. Uh, it's in the chat room somewhere. There's also another link. Um, so you've got to download, I'm just going to put that link again. You just got to download the leg folder. 
so I can't find chat anymore. Okay, there you go. And then unzip it. Okay. Okay, so you should see my anaconda for those people who are using. Well, everybody should see my anaconda, right? Uh, I'm just going to go into my Jupyter notebook and then you'll see what it looks like. Okay, right. Um, so, Ilya, do you want to help me here to, uh, to tell me what the difference between Jupyter Notebook, the way it looks, and Anaconda would be? Oh, sorry, Jupyter Notebook and Google uh, Colab. After after people created the new notebook, I mean, it will be the same. You can run it. Okay. I mean, you don't need to add extra cells. If you just run it with a shift enter, it will be automatically adding the extra cell. So, okay. you know, shift enter okay at least that's so more. so so you don't you don't need to create so in in Jupyter in a google collab you get a cell and that's what i'm typing in now three plus five yeah yeah right? yeah 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 and, yeah, and, yeah. and, and now so if you press shift enter yeah you see I, when i press shift enter i got an eight and a new cell open for those of you who yes, are yes. using google collab so every time i put in a new command like three times five what you'll do is you'll put three times five in, in a new cell and then press shift enter yeah exactly as you've done in the command line cool. so when you can write yeah, you know, exactly. a, a is equal to five b is equal to five or b is equal to three a plus b and it will give you yeah. Yeah. Plus the or you can yes here yeah. you can write a few yeah and i'm going to write um oh no i have to create a new uh mm -hmm. so i'm going to write a plus b and you'll see that it will give me the addition of a plus b when i say shift enter Right. So whatever I write on my command line, you've got to type it in one of those new cells. If for some reason new cell doesn't open up, you just got to click on the plus sign on the top left hand corner on Google <coughs> Collab. Okay, and, and in Google Collab, it's called plus code. It, it will be in the okay. same place, but it's written plus code. Okay, thank you for that. So I hope you guys heard what Ilya said. Um, where I press plus on Google Collab, it will say plus code. So to new, open a new cell, you have to type plus code, right? So, so up to now, what we did was we, we learned some basic operation, arithmetic operation, and we also named some variables, right? There are, now we want to go into some basic built-in function. I'm going to show you three basic built-in functions. So these basic built-in functions are functions that um, that that Python already has been programmed to you know use to calculate something. So let's do absolute value. A B S minus five. What should be the absolute value of minus five? It should be five, right? So um, so A B S uh, open bracket and then if I put a number in it, it'll give me the absolute value of that number. If I say A B S positive ten or ten, it will give me ten. I can also use minimum function. I'm telling now uh, uh, Python to give me the minimum of minimum number between the following one, three, and eight, and it gives me one. Right. So minimum is is a function already built in function where I don't have to tell Python what it does. It's already been programmed into Python. What about round comma four five six? So round 123, sorry, that should be 0. 0.456. Uh, 0. 0.456 uh, uh, would round it up to the nearest unit, right? So round 123.456 would round it to 123. If I want to round it to the first decimal place, uh, first decimal place after the point, decimal, first place after the decimal, then I would write uh, four, sorry, four, five, six, comma one. So now it will uh, round it off to the first decimal, first point after the decimal place, which is one hundred twenty-three point five. What about two places after the decimal? Right. So comma separates two numbers. Um, in other words, it's giving two different information. One is what you're rounding off to, and two to indicate where you're rounding off to. The point is a, is a decimal point, right? 
So this gives me 123.46. Right. So these are examples of built-in functions. I'm not going to go into more of them. Uh, what I do want to do now is um, I want to uh, give me one moment. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. Um, uh, how do I stop sharing my screen? Post share. Stop share. So I'm, I'm going to go into another. I'm going to show you how to call up a table and then manipulate the table, right? Um, I just have so many files open at the moment that it's, uh, it's all over the place. So, okay, so I'm going to call up a table called cones. Now cones is one of the file in the lec folder. Um, let me go back to Zoom and share screen. Okay, you should be able to see my black screen now, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so, I want to read, there's a file called cones.csv in the, in the leg folder that we downloaded, right? Um, and I want to tell Python to read the data in, in, in that folder and put it in a table, right? So, sorry, I'm gonna type in, I hope this works. Oh, so now before I do this, I have actually got to type something else. Give me one moment. So I want actually, Python to run the data science. Um, remember we installed data science? We said pip install data science. So I want Python to install data science quickly. And so what we type is from data science, um, import star. And now it, it brings out all the libraries in the, in the, in the, in the, in the live, all the, I guess, folders in the libraries are called data science. And it takes a little bit of a time, a little bit of time. If you notice earlier when I said cones equals table read table uh, and read the file called cones.csv, it did not read it because there's no function called table. But there is a function called table under data science. So first I need to tell Python to, you know, to load uh, data science. So now it's loading the data science library. Okay, now it's finished loading the data science library. How do I know that? Because it's gone back to those three prompt, three greater than signs or whatever, right? In other words, gone back to the prompt. I'm gonna just pause you and see if there are any questions. Uh, somebody said they were stuck with the zip file. You've got to unzip it and save it somewhere. Velo. Um, Okay, uh, Ibrahim, I have to help you later. Uh, Lebo, what does the abs function do? So if you have a negative, if you put abs open bracket and then you put in a negative number, it will give you the positive part of that number. So if you put negative five, it will say five. If you put in a positive number, it will give back the positive number. So I've imported uh, from data science um, the, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, uh, I've imported data science. So I'm going back to, and I'm typing cones equals table read table, table dot read table. And then in brackets, uh, uh, I'm writing cones dot CSV in single quotes. So let me explain what this is doing. It's using a function called table with a big T. In that function, there is uh, another function, I don't know how to call it, uh, which says to read tables, right? So it, in other words, go to whatever is in the, in the bracket, go to that file and read it as a table and bring it back and store it under something called cones, right? So cones is equal to table, read table, um, open bracket, single quotes, cones.csv. Cones.csv is in the folder that you downloaded. And you see, it, it didn't give me an error when I pressed enter, which meant it read the file, it found the file cones.csv, read the data inside it, put it in a table and, and called it cones, right? I could call it something else. 
um, I could call it A, B. And now I've created a table called A, B. How do I know I've created a table called A, B? If I type A, B, it brings back the table, right? So this table has got three columns. It's got a column for flavor, a uh, column for color and column for price. Can anyone guess what this is probably describing? Probably ice cream, right? So there are three flavors, strawberry, chocolate, and bubble gum. And these flavors have a certain colors. So chocolate's got light brown and dark brown color. Strawberry's got pink and bubble gum has got pink. And, of, uh, and they are of different prices depending on where you shop. So somebody went around to various shops and, and looked at the prices for strawberry, chocolate, and bubblegum ice cream. Right. Now we can start looking Sorry, at- Sorry, Kanjo. Yeah? Can I please comment on the errors which are people saying that if you, when you do the table read cones, and if you have get an error, I got file not found error and things like this, in that case, you might need to write the full path to the file cones.csv. So, so let me show them how I would do that on here. So, so cones equals table. Thanks for that, uh, Elias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, if the, and if the CSV file is in the same folder where the Python uh, script or from which you run Python, of course, cones.csv will be sufficient. Yeah. And if it's not, then you've got to write the whole directory name. So in my case, it was yes, c. Yes. Dot C user Kanshu uh, downloads NITEP data lack uh, cones.csv. In other words, I'm giving it the directory and the file name now, right? Uh, I might have to put in double slash. Let's just see if this will work. This didn't work. In my case, I actually have to put double slash. So instead of single yeah, slash. Sorry. And keep in mind that this is a path for Windows. So if you're using Mac or Linux, you have a slightly different notations, but you should be able to figure out how to use the, how to type the proper path. So if I'm you don't sure know, why, just Google but... it in the corresponding upper, uh, operating system. So I don't know why it's saying not found. I, it's users. So that's why I I I have gone into the correct directory earlier because I don't want to type the directory path all the time, right? And that's why before I went into Python, I ensured I was in the right folder, in the left folder, right? So if you if you didn't go into your left folder, then you've got to type out the whole path and you might have to put double slash instead of single slash, right? And if I now type cones, it tells me the table. So I'll just wait a minute for everybody to do this. Is there any other questions? So, so okay, you did the name table is here, you did not install uh, data science. Did you do pip install data science? Pierre? Oh, that's weird because uh, can you install data science again? Yeah. Did you do the other thing which I said, uh, uh, I'll tell you what it is. You may not have done the from data science import star. Look at the chat room, what Ilya wrote there. From data science import star, did you do that? Johan Berger, you would write it exactly as I write it on, 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 on the command prompt. So if you're already in the right folder, you'd write cones.csv. If you're not in the right folder, then you could write out the whole uh, path to it. Eric, I uh, believe there will be a recording later. 
Yes, yes, yes. There will be a recording which will be available on the NISEP NITEX YouTube channel. Um, Peter, I, I now see I'm in a new window. Now in that new, okay, new window, you have to do uh, from data science, you've got to go into Python and type from data science, import star, and then you've got to uh, write cones that equal the table, that whole sentence. So what I have done is read a file called, called cones.csv and I've, I've taken the information and saved it in a table called cones, right? If I write cones.labels, it tells me the, 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 the column names. In other words, flavor, color, and price, right? So if I wanted, if I had a large enough uh, table and I wanted to look at what are the different variables in the table? All I will do is cones.labels and it will tell me the various labels of the column, right? What about if I wanted to, oh, sorry, let's see. What if I wanted to only look at certain parts of this file, of this table? Let's say I didn't really want to look at color. I only cared about uh, flavor and price. So then I would write cones.select, in other words, select, the columns that you want. And I put the columns and the column labels in, in, in single quotes. And if you remember, cones had three columns to it. Now, if I, if I only select two of the columns, it will bring back the two columns. This doesn't mean the table has changed. In other words, cones still has uh, three columns, but we are asking Python to only display two columns of that a table which is flavor and price. So if I type cones again, it'll give me all three columns. Right. I can also look at only two columns by saying cones dot drop color. Right. In other words, I asked it to drop the column color and display the rest of the table to me. Right. So. I can either choose to display everything, which is to type cones, or I can ask you to select only certain columns and display that to me, or I can ask it to drop certain columns and display the rest. Right. Oh, sorry, I've just got windows and windows open. I'm just going to um, see what else do I want to do with this columns table. Now, let's go to a different file. In the, in the folder that on LEC, there is another file called skyscraper, right? So I want to read skyscraper. So I write skyscrapers equals table read dash table uh, open brackets skyscrapers.csv. If you're not in the folder already, you've got to type in um, the the directory path to it, right? So I might have to type p dot dot users dot kanshu dot sorry, this will be double slash. Um, in my case, downloads. That's why you have to remember where you 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 save the file. Right. Oh, I didn't find it. I I must spell something here. Oh, I've got a single splash, right? So if I, if I put in the right path, it will go look in the path and it'll find the skyscraper.csv and it'll read it. I obviously don't have to call the resulting table size skyscrapers. I can call it uh, country, right? So I'm reading a file called skyscraper.csv and I'm saving the information in a table called country on Python. Now, if I type Kanshu, it gives me the first 10 lines of the table. So you'll see the first 10 lines, and then you see it's got another 190 rows that have been omitted. Um, right. and, and in this, uh, the, it looks like this is a table. Let's look at what this table's um, labels are, right? So it labels are name, material, city, height and completed. So what it looks like is the names of buildings. 
what the building was made out of, where the building is located, the city, the height of the building, and when it was completed, right? Now, let's say we wanted, out of this information, we wanted to only take, uh, bring back information, sorry, consume uh, information on, uh, on buildings located in Los Angeles, right? So I will write, um, Kanchu Way City, right? So give me back from the table, from the column City, where it says Los Angeles. I hope I'm, I'm spelling Los Angeles correctly. Right. So from the table Kanchu, uh, go to the column City and wherever it says Los, Los Angeles, bring back that data. And if you look at it, it brings back all the names of the buildings that are located in Los Angeles. Right? And only Los Angeles because I told it only to bring back Los Angeles. Um, what about if I wanted now to say find uh, not the not the not the city where is Los Angeles? Maybe somebody could tell me how will I find all the buildings that are called Willis Tower? Can somebody tell me what would be the code for bringing back only the only the bu uh, buildings only the buildings that are called Willis Tower? You can use the find function. I haven't taught you the find function, right? What I've taught you is the where function. So I'll say, can't you go to the table, can't you? Go and you'll type where, in other words, find under the column name, right? Bring back all the names where it's equal to Willis Tower. So if I use the function where with, with respect to a table, so I put the table name first, which is country, dot where, then the column name, and what I want to bring back from that column name, right? In this case, under the column called label called name, I want to bring back all the buildings that are called Willis Tower. If I wanted to bring back all under the column city, New York City, I will write, uh, can't you wear city, comma, New York City. Right. Sorry, I don't know why I put that. Right. In other words, go to the table, can't you, wherever it's city, look for New York City and bring back only that data. And what about if I wanted to bring back all the all the city? So if you look at New York City, there are ten lines that are being shown and sixty three omitted, right? So that means there are seventy three buildings in New York City that are on this database, right? Now I want to look at it ordered by completed. Then I would say can't you dot dot where Oh, and I have to, okay, I have to go back. Can't you dot where city is New York City dot sort completed. So the first part of us is go to the table, can't you, where the column uh, label is city, bring back only New York City, and then sort it out by the column completed. And you see it's sorted out by the column completed where you've got the earliest listed up front and the late, latter buildings listed further down, right? It's not showing all the, all the rows. I'll show you next week how to display all 63, all 73 rows, right? If I wanted to do this, but I wanted to display it the other way around where I want um, it to be the earliest buildings first and then the latter building, I would say, give me where descending equals true. 
So now the go to the table kanshu, that's the first part yeah, on the left hand side. Where city equals New York City, bring back that table. And but then sort it out by the column label completed, where descending equals true, which means it must be reverse order, right? The highest number on top and then the lowest number on the bottom. So the uh, the the youngest building on top and the oldest building at the bottom. And if I press enter, it, it gives me the reverse order. So if I look at this table, 432 Park Avenue is the building that was built in New York City out of concrete. It's 425.5, I presume, meters high. And it was completed in 2015. That and Sky building are the youngest building in the database from New York City, right? So this allows me to manipulate tables in order for me to view tables in a certain manner. It allows me to look at tables and drop certain, we, we learned how to look at only certain columns. So where we used a function called select, we used a function called drop where we dropped certain columns. And then we used a function called where, where we could choose only certain values in a certain column. So if I say where city comma New York City, it will tell me bring back the whole table and look under the label city and bring back wherever it's equal to New York City. So I'm going to stop there for now. And then I'm going to help people who may have installation difficulties, right? Um, and then we'll continue from next week. Maybe I'll leave five minutes for questions on stuff that I did now before I start helping people who may have difficulties installing stuff. My code is giving this error. So you must put double quotes, double slash Vasily. Instead of saying C dot slash users, try C dot slash slash users, slash slash user, slash slash downloads, et cetera. Um, the Makatsu. Um, uh, Am I the only one without audio? I hope everybody else heard me. Uh, you might have to look through my video again, you know, to to go through this, right? You know, the, the audio is fine on 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 my side. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully it's being recorded uh, fine, and 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 you could check what I talked about earlier. So Daniel, I'm going to help with uh, stuff like purple installation after this. So, so CPO, good question. Is read table a built-in function? Yes, it's a built-in function under the bigger group of functions called table. I don't know what you call it, what the right wording is. And, and table is found under the package data science. So Daniel, uh, if I'd show you on Jupyter Notebook, um, I will show to you after we, we we stop recording for this session for in terms of questions related to uh, what we've done so far, and then we'll go through the we'll troubleshoot after this. Is there any other questions? So Tabani, you you have to install uh, data science. So wait after this, and we'll install data science, put space after import. Who, who did not put space? Oh yeah, put space uh, space after import before you put star. Chabani. How did you define country? Are you talking about the table country? Um, I, def I wrote the following, let me uh, go back to my code. Uh, where is my code? Okay, I have to close the chat room. Um, so if you look on now, it says country equals table read table. And then in a single course, I gave it the path and the file name. And so I defined a table called country, and I'm asking you to read the table in that file. If I want to exit Python, I will write exit, E-X-I-T, open bracket, close bracket, and 
uh, enter. And you should go back to your like your dust prompt. Um, Andrew, mine is also 64 bits. So it's not an issue with 64 bits. It's got to be something else. How do you download data science? When you, after you've installed PUP, you type in PUP space install space data science as one word. Ido. How do I, how, where can I find the documentation on the format of a command? So I think what you need to do uh, is go back to the recording here and look at the way I wrote it. Um, you can get uh, documentation elsewhere, uh, but I'll have to find it for you. Yes, you can use any name like Kanchu, Sky, Sky, Crap, exact, exactly. Perfectly right, Tajuddin. Uh, Francesco, shall we stop recording? And then I'm just going to help troubleshoot the people uh, who have installation difficulties. No problem. Yeah, I stopped. Cool, thank you.